Okay, now let's look at a, a practical example um, in as far as percentage purity is concerned. It says here a sample of table salt, which is the actual substance that we are interested in, is contaminated by sand. So it means sand is our impurity, okay? Um, this is our impurity, right? So table salt, which uh, is the pure substance, sodium chloride, okay? So the mass of the sample is 5.5 grams. So this is a very useful piece of information because this is actually the total mass of sample, okay? Pay careful attention to that. So the sample is dissolved in distilled water and filtered, okay? So the mass of the residue is 1.5 grams. So the residue in this case uh, is the mass of the sand, which is actually insoluble in water. So all the table salt will dissolve in water and then what will be filtered off is actually the impurity. So in as far as calculating the percentage of table salt, uh, this is how we actually go about it, okay? So we know that percentage purity, okay, is actually equals to mass of uh, sodium chloride, which is table salt in this case, okay, um, in sample, right, right, and then uh, divided by total mass of sample, okay. So this is typically multiplied by 100, right? So this is typically a, a routine type of a, a question where you identify the, corre the correct formula, do the necessary substitution, and then find the correct answer, okay? So the mass of sodium chloride in the sample is actually total mass of the sample less that of the impurities, which is actually 5.5, okay, minus 1.5 divided by the total mass, which is 5.5 grams, uh, multiplied by 100, okay? So the percentage purity then becomes, um, if we go to our calculator, what do we have? 5.5, um, we can even punch it like uh, straight into the calculator, 5.5 less the mass of the impurity, which is 1.5, divided by the total mass, which is 5.5, uh, we multiply that by 100, okay? then this will definitely give us the, the percentage purity. So the percentage purity of table salt is 72,73, right? So it's 72,73%, right? Now, always leave your answer to two decimal places unless or otherwise specified, right? Okay, now let's look at a different question altogether, uh, still addressing percentage purity of a substance. It says here, Elena hits 50 grams of calcium carbonate, okay, which reacts according to the following balanced equation. So what's the main idea here? It, it, it's not always that you'll be required to balance. Sometimes the balanced equation of the reaction will be given to you. So that part of the law of conservation of mass has already been taken care of. So yours is to actually apply the stoichiometric ratios, you know, to try and check, you know, uh, the percentage purity in the actual substance that uh, uh, we are looking at. So um, calcium carbonate, uh, decomposes to give us carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. So if this is balanced, it says to us the stoichiometric ratio in which they react is one is to one is to one, right? Okay, so what mass of carbon dioxide will be collected if the calcium carbonate was 100% pure? Now, we are saying that if it's 100% pure, we are saying that in that 50 grams of calcium carbonate, there is no impurity if it's 100% pure. So there is zero impurities. So all that 50 grams is actually the pure substance, which is calcium carbonate, right? So that's the first question. Now, how then uh, do we answer that? We will use our stoichiometric ratio. So uh, we know that the ratio is one is to one, okay? Because we, we were interested in the carbon dioxide gas that will be collected. So we ask ourselves whether how many a moles of calcium carbonate are present in 50 grams. So num the moles of calcium carbonate present in 50 grams is mass of sample over the molar mass, right? The mass of the sample is actually 50 grams. It's given molar mass. If we go to our periodic table, um, we will get, um, a, you know, uh, calcium has a mass of 40, okay, plus the mass of carbon, which is 12, and then plus 
uh, the mass of oxygen multiplied by three. So it's three multiplied by 16. So this gives us the molar mass of calcium carbonate, which is 100 grams per mole, right? So that's 100 grams per mole, right? So um, in other words, uh, if you do that on the car, you get half a mole, which is 0 0,5 mole, right? So one will produce one, meaning 0 0,5 mole, okay? Um, 0 0,5 mole of, you know, calcium carbonate. Okay, that's the most important part. Will produce uh, 0 0,5 mole, okay, of carbon dioxide gas, right? So we're asking ourselves, what is, the, what is the mass of a 0 0,5 mole sample of carbon dioxide? Now, we'll say then moles of carbon dioxide, okay, is equal to mass that will be obtained divided by the molar mass. So the, 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 the mole is 0 0,5 because of the ratio one is to one, okay? So we're looking for the mass, but what's the molar mass of carbon dioxide? It's 12 plus 16 times two, okay? Which gives us, um, just to verify that, um, 12 is for carbon plus 16 multiplied by two. Okay, that gives us a 44, right? That's, that's, that's the, the, the molar mass of carbon dioxide. So that's 44. So the mass of carbon dioxide that would be collected, if that was 100% pure, is equal to 0 0.5 times 44, which is equal to 22 grams, right? So this is what the question demanded of us, okay? Right, the follow-up says, the learner collected 18.2 uh, grams of carbon dioxide gas, calculate the percentage purity, okay? Now, if we expected um, uh, 22 grams, but instead of the 22, uh, we only collected 18.2 grams. So percentage purity, okay, of the calcium carbonate, okay, is equals to uh, mass of carbon dioxide, the actual mass of carbon dioxide, okay, uh, collected, okay, um, divided by the theoretical one, which is um, the one that we, 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 we got, uh, which is, um, or the expected one, okay, uh, mass of carbon dioxide, the one that we calculated using the stoichiometric ratio, we multiply that by 100, okay. So the actual mass is 18,2. Right, we expected it to be uh, 22, right? Um, and then we multiply that by 100. This will give us the percentage purity of the calcium carbonate, right? So in this case, what do we have? We've got 18,2 divided by uh, 22. We express that as a percentage times 100, okay? What does that give us? As a decimal fraction, it's 82,73, right? So the percentage is 82,73%. We always express it to two decimal places, okay? Now, the question then goes further and says, what mass would have been uh, collected if the sample was 70% uh, uh, pure? Now, what we are saying, if it was 100% pure, um, it would have expected uh, 22 uh, uh, grams, okay? So 18.2, uh, uh, we can use a, you know, a stoichiometric ratio. So this is more of a question that involves ratio and proportion. So we are saying that of the 50 uh, grams sample of carbon, uh, 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 so calcium carbonate rather, uh, only 70% of that sample is actually the pure substance that we are interested in. Now we're asking ourselves, what, what would be the mass of carbon dioxide that will be uh, collected, right? So if we go back to the previous one, uh, you know, um, at, at, at 82%, 82,73, okay, we got um, a, a only 18.2, okay? So if it was 70, what would be the, 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 the new uh, uh, mass that would be collected? So 82,72% um, purity uh, would give 18.2, um, um, right? Uh, uh, grams. What about 70%? Okay, it gives, um, we can model this and say X. 
Okay, so the question here is that uh, we're using the same uh, uh, best that we are given, which is 18.2. So if we, we get that, we, can able, we are able to determine the mass, which is X uh, in this case, uh, is equals to, we can uh, kind of cross multiply that, which gives us what? 70 multiplied by 18.2, okay? Uh, by 18.2, okay? So this is uh, just simple math divided by 82,72, right? Okay, so if we go to our calculator, just to verify that uh, we'll have um, 70 multiplied by 18.2, okay, divided by 82,72, okay. But this is just one of the ways of doing it, okay? Uh, the, there are many ways in which, so if it was 70%, we'll get um, the, the, the mass that will be collected is actually 15,4, right? So it will be 15,4 grams of carbon dioxide gas that will be collected, right? Now, this, this is the main idea in as far as that, okay? Um, so we've done that calculation. So it means that if we're saying that this 50 grams contains impurities. It means a particular percentage of that 50 grams is actually calcium carbonate. And then the rest of that mass uh, actually uh, consists of the impurities, right? So this is the main idea in as far as percentage purity is concerned, right? So there, there will be many different examples that you'd want to uh, actually use in as far as you know calculating percentage purity. But you must take note that the balanced equation of reaction actually gives us the stoichiometric ratio. Now, if we're saying, if it's 100%, it gives us a certain mass, okay? We would use that fact to actually say that, okay, if the sample contained a percentage that's less than 100 of the actual substance, then what is it that will be uh, actually formed? So we, we try and be flexible around that, but more and more practice in this will definitely go a long way in terms of understanding what percentage purity uh, entails in as far as you know, problem solving is concerned. All the best with that. Mm -hmm.